Hi, it's Kerner Tech here with the next in a series of videos about building Gen 2 Linux on a Raspberry Pi 400. So in the previous video we left the Raspberry Pi compiling the kernel and also updating the system with a couple of configuration changes as well as updates to um, the actual software that came with the stage 3 tarball that we installed. So I think probably the next thing I want to do is to finish off installing the kernel um, and then we can go back to continuing with the handbook installing the actual system. So you can see the kernel actually took uh, just about an hour and a half um, and obviously you can see there that the updates, although this is in parallel with the kernel so it would these would have taken a little bit less time had they been run separately but um, roughly uh, about six hours is that um, that took to, to update the um, reason being looks like GLibc is a reasonably big package, I'm not sure if I saw GCC was updated as well um, at some point yeah, there it is there, so that probably took up the bulk of the time, updating GCC. So we'll look at that in a short while. Let's go back to the kernel, so that finished compiling. So we'll just go back to the um, Raspberry Pi instructions, which we'll is sort of crib bits from this and adapt it for our purposes. So you can see the next stage for a 64 bit is to run the modules install command. So let's do that. I'll recall the previous command and remember that there's none none of these variables that need to be put in because we're not cross compiling. Just um as I say adapting um this cross compiling just for our purposes on 64 bit. So I'll remove these targets and add in modules install get rid of the J4 as well actually and I think it's quite a few modules so these might take a, a little while to install a few minutes maybe so let's run that All right, okay this is final directory Interesting. Ah, oh, now this looks like it's failed actually. Yes, that should have some different outputs. So let's. I didn't realise this. Ah, uh, oh, right, looks like it's missing some drivers. Right now, of course, this may have been a problem caused by the GCC being updated. Um, as I said, it's not normally a good idea to run in merge or do compiling at the same time. So what I'm going to do is rerun this make command. And with any luck, it will carry on. And actually finish building the kernel. Let's see if these fail now. Yeah, it looks like they're working now. So we've got to actually wait for this to finish. I did think that um, our hour and a half was uh, quite quick considering there was other compiling going on at the same time. Um, I think the kernel normally takes about 80 or 90 minutes. So that was a bit of a surprise. So yeah, we'll just uh, have to wait for this to complete properly now. Um, and then we can carry on with the installation.
Right, so that has finished compiling now. Um, in fact, it looks like it's completed. So just better check, make sure this time. Looks like it was building modules at the end there, so it should be the end. That is the last thing it does. Uh, okay, there's no more scroll. Oh, so is it's the disk that's gone to sleep. Let's go back a bit further. No, there's no more scroll buffer left, so um, to me it looked like it's finished. I'm going to run this once more just to be doubly sure there was no failures this time. So it's just going through all the um, programs it's needed to compile, just checking to see whether they need to be recompiled. So hopefully this will just drop out at the end without having compiled anything yet, but it has. So that's good. That shows the kernel has actually been compiled successfully. So now we can do the modules install. And this should work this time now. So that's copying all of the modules into the final destination. Okay, now the next operations we need to do um, Assume that um, there's an existing boot partition with existing files and so on, and obviously we haven't got that. Um, and uh, this box here we need to look at for 64-bit. Uh, so what we need to do is to build that up ourselves by hand in a similar way to how uh, the layout is for uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi as it is. So if we look at the boot directory. There's nothing in there, let's just check it is actually mounted. Um, yeah, there it is there. SDA1 on boot. So um, the first thing we should do is to create um, this, where is it, this overlay directory. Now I'm not sure this, if the standard Raspberry Pi actually requires any of these overlays. Um, I've not investigated it thoroughly yet. Um, uh, so all I've done is just copied everything in there and just um, assumed that there is stuff in there that needs to be uh, there for a successful boot. But, um, I'm not actually so sure, so I might take a chance and, well, just skip, either skip that or just take a look at the files to see um, if there's anything obvious that should be installed. So first thing we need to do is we don't need to back up the old kernel because um, there isn't an old kernel. The kernel we've booted off at the moment is on the SD card. Um, so we can skip that, but we need to do this command here. Um, but we're not copying it to mount FAT32. We're copying obviously to the boot directory. In fact, let's just echo that kernel variable make sure it's set yes it is so let's redo that command change the destination location which is forward slash boot and that should be the kernel copied and there it is um, the next thing we need to do is to copy these DTB files now these files I have looked at to see which are required and um, certainly for a Raspberry Pi 400 there is only a few um, I think they differ depending on what model of Raspberry Pi you are using um, the reason why the it's got here to copy all the DTP files is just to cover off all the models 
um, of the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is how the standard Raspberry Pi operating system is delivered, just so you can plug the SD card in only Raspberry Pi and it will just boot magically. So you can either do that and copy them all in, or you can do what I'm about to do, just copy the specific ones for the model that's required. Um, and you can see it's quite obvious which um, we need. Um, let's do that without the listing, make it a bit easier to read. Um, you can see there's one there for a Raspberry Pi 2B, 3B, 3B Plus, and so on, Computer Module 3. There's the one we want, so it's actually only one file we need to copy. So I'm going to copy that file now. So CP that file there, and as you can see, that goes directly into the root of the destination directory, which is in our case the boot file system, uh, boot directory. So after that operation, you can see we've got this DTB file with the kernel image. Now, um, as I've said before just now, the overlays, um, when I've looked at that, let's have a look at it again, I've not been too sure, so I've just copied the whole lot, but I imagine... Ah, oh, right, okay. Oh, DTB star, sorry. That overlay map one I think is quite important. Uh, right, yes, this is why I got a little bit confused, well, not confused, I was in doubt. Um, to do with the hardware acceleration, that, that file, judging by the name of it, is almost certainly one we need um, to get the hardware acceleration running. Pi 4, that's virtually the same as the 400. I imagine this one here is for the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, and then there's other things here which I'm not sure are absolutely required and I've not experimented so I am not going to take a chance. I'm going to copy all of these onto the boot partition. <clears throat> but like I say, I'm sure that most of these um, are probably not required uh, to make the Raspberry Pi 400 work things like this backlight um, yes these other things SPI I'm not sure you are so I'm not sure whether they're to do with the GPIO interface or not I'm not sure um, there's an upstream dash pi 4 there as well so rather than take a chance I'm going to actually copy all these like the instructions suggest here so um, let's copy this bit here first. So I'll have to make uh, an overlay directory in the boot part in the boot directory. So we'll do that first. Overlays, and then we can copy these DTB files into the boot overlays directory. And as you can see, there's one other file there, README, which is I think it's licensing information. So we'll do that as well in case um, that needs to be there for anybody else who might see um, this stuff that um, we're building um, and that should be it um, now there's a few other things we need to do to finish off creating the boot partition because um, as you might imagine this is just for updating the kernel building your own kernel it it's not assuming that you're building um, a boot system up from scratch. So at the moment, what we've got, we've created and copied enough information um, that's related to the actual kernel and what the kernel requires to boot and activate the devices on the Pi. There are other files that need to be copied uh, to allow the Raspberry Pi to boot. So the kernel is like the second stage, if you like, of the boot process. The initial stage, I think, is the graphics processor, um, which boots up and it will hand over to the kernel at some point during the, pro the boot process. Um, and those are the firmware files and uh, configuration files we need to install now. 
Okay, so what we need to do is copy from some files from the existing boot directory. It's the easiest way to do this. So if I just look at, um, sorry, I'll have to go out of the truth. So I'll select another tab. This one here. If we look at the boot directory on the actual Raspberry Pi, um, you can see this is the file we just copied. There it's 48794. And here it was. Um, Raspberry Pi 400, 48794, so it's actually the same, which you'd expect because it's just a binary uh, blob, so it, it wouldn't have been compiled, it's just um, been made available as part of the kernel build. Um, so there's a few files we need to copy here. Um, the command line we can use, we'll copy that and use it as a template. Config.txt as well. A couple of these fix up files we need. Again, they're dependent on the model of Raspberry Pi that we're using. Um, so I'll show you which ones I'll be using for the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, if you want to specifically copy the ones required for a, a different version of the Raspberry Pi, then um, you'll have to find out which ones are appropriate or alternative, just copy the lot. Um, in fact, the quick way to do this will be to copy, copy everything that's in this directory into the Gen 2 boot directory. Um, but as you can see, I'm trying to just copy, copy enough that's essential. Um, and also there's these start files as well which need to be copied. So let's start with the <coughs> um, <coughs> start 4.l file. So it's for the Raspberry Pi 400 and probably the Raspberry Pi it's this file here that needs to copy. So let's copy that file and we're putting it into MNT Gen 2 boot. Okay, let's copy it from the boot. So now if I go back to the Gen 2 truth and list the boot directory, you can see that start for the elf is there. And likewise we need to copy the fix up dot fix up 4.dat which is this one here for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's copy that one as well. Let's go back and just check that's copied OK and there it is there. Um, and we'll copy the command line on config.txt in the same way. So these are um, parameters that are passed to the kernel in this command line and the config.txt is um, tells how tells Roger Pi how it should boot up with certain parameters to configure the hardware mainly. Okay, so now let's show that's copied OK. So yep, there they are, command line and config.txt. Um, let me just check to see if there's anything else in my list that we need to install. Now I think that is it. Um, now on earlier models of the Raspberry Pi, I'm not sure if it's the Raspberry Pi three needs it or not, but certainly the two and the original, they also need this bootcode.bin file. Um, pretty sure the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't need it because the Raspberry Pi 400 doesn't need it, they're, they're so similar. Um, so, let's just take a look at this one, I'm not sure about that one, I don't think we need that one. So yeah, that's worth bearing in mind if you've, um, no, we won't need that. Uh, if you've got an older Raspberry Pi, you definitely need to um, have that that file as well. The Raspberry Pi 4 and 400 boot in a different way where this, I think it's um, firmware, um, like boot code firmware that's um, required to start the machine. Um, with the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400, it's actually built in 
Um, I think it's on an E prom, if I remember what I've read correctly. Uh, but yeah, so I won't be copying that because it's not necessary. Uh, right, so that should be enough for that. If we go back to the true environment, um, what we can do now is to uh, make some changes to the command line dot text. So I'm going to edit command line dot text, and in here there's several things we need to adjust. Um, the first of which will be um, oh this yes there is a this root line, we need to change this part UUID um, because that's referring to the SD card that I've booted from. We need to change that to the part UUID of the hard disk that I'm booting from. Um, if we don't do this, then when we boot from the hard disk, it will use the part UUID and say, oh yeah, I've got an SD card that matches that part UUID. And all we'll do is we'll just re uh, boot the Raspberry Pi operating system. So we need to find out the part UUID um, of the root partition um, so that we do actually boot from the hard disk and therefore we boot um, Gen 2. And the other thing, oh no, that's the only thing we need to do now. Actually, let's leave that for the moment. Let's start with the config.txt. Uh, a little bit of an easier change to do straight up. Um, if you remember, before I do that, if you remember in the boot, we've copied this kernel image file here, kernel 8. Now we could actually rename that to show that it's a custom kernel. So we could do something like move boot kernel 8.image to boot kernel 8, um, and you could call it, say, Gen 2. Now, because we've changed that, the Raspberry Pi won't be able to detect a kernel to boot from. So what we can do is we can edit the config.txt and actually put in what kernel image we want to boot from. In the same way as if you did the uh, cross-compile build of the kernel, um, if you remember, we added the option here to force the Raspberry Pi to boot from the 64-bit kernel. So um, what we can do is just remove this old file name and put in our new one uh, without the path and so now the um, boot process of the Broadcom chip will know um, that that's the image, we, the kernel image we wish to load at boot time so I'll do Control X, yes to save that and press enter to save it so the next thing we need to do is to adjust this um, part UUID uh, for the command line dot text, so um, is it ls block we need? No, it's not that one. It's block id. Yeah. So block id by itself shows all the available partitions, um, or you can do something like block id with a device name, like that. So the one I'm interested in at the moment, if I do f disk minus l. Um, you can see the SD card has got these two devices, and the first one is the boot. So I want to find out the block ID of that. I can do block ID with that device name. Oops, I spelled block ID correctly. And you can see the part UID is this number here. Now if I go back to the um, command line dot text, you'll see that number is exactly the same there but the suffix is 02 because that means that's the second um, partition which is what the root is so the first one which I did was the boot partition if I was to do the same command on the second partition you can see the part UID is exactly the same as it is in the command line.txt and there it is. So that shows that that's the bit we need to change. So again, it's just a simple case of running block ID or now Gen 2 root partition. 
Um, if we've forgotten which one it is, we can just do an F disk. We can see that the largest partition with the type 83, which is the Linux uh, partition ID, it's SDA3 is the um, partition we want to run block ID on. So I'll rub that out, put dev SDA3 in, and there's the answer we need. So that's the part UUID that I need to copy and uh, overwrite in command line dot text. So delete that, center click to paste that part UUID in, control X, save it, and just to be doubly sure, I'll cat the boot command line dot text so they're both on the screen and just visually check them e 0 cae 9 f 2 dash 3 It's worth spending extra time just to make sure that you've done that correctly because the last thing you want to do is to um, try and reboot the Raspberry Pi into your new Gen 2 system, find there's something wrong and it fails to boot and then it's um, a extra effort to get in to actually make any corrections for any errors or any mistakes that have been made. So it's definitely worth um, spending a little bit of extra time um, doing these checks. Okay, so that should be just about it for the kernel. Um, Right, the only thing I need to check, did I do make modules install? I can check that by going to lib modules. Looks like they are there. Yep, they are there. So I've obviously done that already. That's good. Yep, there's stuff there, so it looks like I've done that already. That's fine. So really, we can go back to the Gen 2 handbook. And, yep, so basically we've done, um, we've done the updates. If I go back to this screen here, we've done the updates. Um, after any update you've done, there's uh, messages which you need to take you know, take note of and um, act upon. Now, um, these uh, this error has occurred because there wasn't a kernel in place with any configuration. So um, it looks like it hasn't picked that up. So what I'm going to do is reinstall this. It's only a small package, but it's the main... Um, package that's got the emerge package, uh, the emerge binary, plus a few others. So it's uh, quite essential that this is working correctly. So I'm going to reinstall that. But I'll just quickly check um, the messages of any of these others. Uh, if you find that I'm whizzing through, it's because I, I recognise the outputs on these. I know when to skip over them or um, make note of things. But uh, it's worth just going through this one here. Um, that's something we need to do is to reboot, but we will be rebooting to um, re-establish the PAM libraries, so not too worried about that. Um, so that one says that group check, I presume there's return those. Please run it by hand and run group convars afterwards. So let's do that. So just copy that. Is this, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. It doesn't jump back down when you paste stuff. So group check and then run group conv afterwards. So they, they seem to have run okay, so that's okay. Then it says to um, restart udev as soon as possible. Now this might cause a problem because we're not in the process. Yeah, we're not, we're in a trout. So that's why that hasn't worked. Um, so hopefully it's not going to cause any problems, um, but we're not too far away from getting a reboot. So um, hopefully we're not going to get any too too many problems due to these things that need to be done. 
Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to rebuild Portage. So all I need to do is to emerge Portage, and I've got to do the minus one to say that um, I don't want to add it to the world set. It'll already be part of the system set anyway, but I definitely don't want to add it to the world. AV to ask me if I want to do it. V is for verbose, just give me a bit more feedback. So I'll just wait for this to complete and then I'll carry on with the um, just checking over the final parts of the kernel build. Okay, that's better. There's no um, errors now or, or warnings about missing configuration settings. Um, if you remember in the previous video, I checked that those settings were actually in the kernel and they were already preset, so that, that was good. There's no changes needed to be made there. So, yeah, that's the updates done. So I'm just going to switch back and just um, check the with the kernel. Um, I have done modules installed, but I'm going to rerun it again. There's no harm in rerunning it. It just gives me peace of mind that I have actually done that. Um, I guess switching backwards and forwards hasn't helped. Um, uh, not making a note of it. So, like I said, there's no harm in it. It will just overwrite what's already there. The next part, we don't do the make install because we've installed it by hand as per the Raspberry Pi instructions because it's a Raspberry Pi kernel effectively. I'll move back here. Um, there's other ways of building the system, but again, we're not interested in this because this is how you do it on a normal um, Gen 2 system. Okay, then we come to installing firmware. Now, there is some firmware required to get the Wi Fi and Bluetooth and the um, was it the video acceleration as well I think um, the hardware acceleration for the video um, but I'll come to that um, as the last thing uh, what I'd like to do really is to get the um, system up and running um, I'm using a wired uh, network connection so I don't need the wireless at the moment um, if you do absolutely need the wireless then um, skip forward to probably the last video or or maybe the penultimate video where I'll go through installing the firmware for the wireless and the Bluetooth and so on uh, at that point but at the moment it's not absolutely necessary on a wired connection. Um, one thing with the Linux firmware the it hasn't got all the latest firmware for the Raspberry Pi 400 unfortunately I did try to use the Gen 2 uh, Linux firmware package, but when I tested this, um, it didn't have those the certain files available. So I've had to copy files from the uh, SD card of the Raspberry Pi. So that's worth bearing in mind. Although um, you know, depending on how much time has passed since um, when I've created this video and when you're watching it, it might be worth um, trying that out to see if um, it has actually got the firmware in, in there now. Uh, 